Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. And on today's episode, we are going to be talking about how to free ourselves from the trauma and the emotional baggage from the past so we can find our true selves. As I am joined by speaker Johannes Atlas. Johannes is an amazing individual because he has not even let anything in life stop him, including disability. He's going to be talking about his disability and how he played multiple sports as well as participated in martial arts. And now he is helping people find their true self. So we're going to be talking to him about his life, what that means, how he's helping people and any current and upcoming projects that he might be working on to further help people. Johannes, thank you so much for joining me today. Yes, thank you for for the invite, Curtis. It's always uh, always a pleasure to be able to help somebody else, so thank you for reaching out. Well, why don't you start off by giving the listeners a little bit of background about yourself? Uh, Yes, sir. So, like you said, my name is Johannes. I was born and raised here in SoCal. So, I was actually born with um, Poland syndrome. So my right, just to give everybody an idea, my right hand can literally fit in the palm of my left hand. And uh, I don't have any chest muscle on the right side of my body. It's, it's, Bolton syndrome is characterized by the underdeveloped, underdeveloped chest and arm muscles. It's, it's characterized all on one side of the body. But so um, it's kind of, you know, created a, a little bit of a disadvantage, but also an advantage in the sense of it made me figure, it made me have to figure things out. And so growing up, you know, like you said, I played a number of sports. I did baseball, basketball, football, tennis, Muay Thai. And I never allowed it to, I mean, I, to God be the glory, man, I never allowed it to stop me from doing anything. And another thing I'm very grateful of for is my parents that they never babied me. They never, you know, oh, you know, let me help you. You know, they, they made me figure it out. They always pushed me to figure things out. And where one thing my mom told me growing up was people are going to talk about you till the day you die. And so, you know, in her telling me that it made me figure things out. And so um, growing up, I wasn't very conscious about my hand until about high school. And it was about then where, you know, I started because I became very self-conscious of my my hand. I started, I hid my hand in my pocket all throughout school, all throughout high school and even past that. And because it was just, I was, I was afraid of what people might have to say of, you know, what if they say this or what if they say that? And I mean, and even in playing in sports and throughout school. You know, people would say stuff and I got teased and I got made fun of. And when I would go to shake people's hand, they would pull back and they would, they would freak out. And that stuff, it used to like get to me. And in the long run, what I ended up doing in those moments, I never realized it until probably about, it was in March. Sorry, it was actually in May of 2020. But what I had realized was that in those moments, being teased and being made fun of when people would freak out and were there or you know, when they would see my hand, I made those moments mean that I'm not enough. And so in doing that in the long run, it affected how I would carry myself. It affected how I would view myself and even how I would interact with people because I then started to seek people's approval and behave in such a way to people to like me, not seeking my own validation, but everybody else's. And so it's almost like I, I kind of like lost myself. Like I didn't, you know, I didn't know who I was and and so in the long run, you know, I got involved in, I wanted to get out of that though. Uh, you know, I, be, I was aware that, you know, I was behaving in such a way, but, you know, I wanted to get out of that. And so throughout, you know, after, after high school, a little bit after college, I got involved with this financial firm where it was more like a leadership and self-development course. And so I, in between that, I got involved with the Chamber of Commerce, the Riverside Chamber of Commerce. And, you know, it's a lot of shaking hands. And I was literally nervous to get into this because... I didn't want to have to be reminded what happened, you know, in high school when I was shaking people's hand and they would freak out. I didn't want to be reminded of that. And so I was literally scared to get into business because of this. And so but I did it anyways. And like I said, I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. And so um, even like now, I remember last year I was praying or sorry, in May of 2020, as I was saying, I, there was one day I was praying to God. I'm like, Lord, open up my eyes to me beyond the limitations of my understanding. 
like, Lord, open me up and like, let me know what's going on with me, within me, because something's wrong and I don't know what it is, but I'm just feeling stuck. And so God had opened up my eyes about two weeks later after I prayed that. And he showed me that, you know, it's that feeling of what's, of what's inside that I feel like I'm not enough. And so since then, I've just been, you know, exploring that and, and getting deeper into knowing myself and who I am and basically just getting restored into who I truly am. And it's been an amazing journey since. Well, let's talk about how you played the sports and participated in martial arts. How hard was that and how did you manage? Because, you know, baseball, basketball, a lot of people got big hands. How were you able to manage and participate? So I think uh, so basketball, I only did play for two years. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't that good. (laughs) Baseball, I played the longest. I played baseball for seven years. And what I would do, actually, I would catch and throw with the same hand. So I had a glove on my left hand. I would catch the ball. It was a quick little exchange, too. I got really good at this. But I would catch the ball with my left hand, and I would kind of bring my right arm around like like you're holding a baby, and I would take the glove off, grab the ball, and then throw it. And it, like, it was a quick little thing. And so, I, like I said, I got really good at this. And I played outfield, and I loved it. So outfield and pitcher. And I got – yeah, it was it was fun. And then in, in Muay Thai – uh, tennis, you know, I'm, I'm only using one hand. Football, I only played for one year. That football was was probably a mistake <laughs> because I got involved in my senior year of high school, where all these other guys have been playing for all these years, and so I was I spent a lot of time on the floor. I'll just say that. <laughs> but uh, Muay Thai was it was a little bit. It, I'm not going to say it was easier, but where you know I have a glove on my hand, but I couldn't necessarily close the glove like I could, like I you know like I could with my left hand. So I would still I would still, you know, throw, you know, my throw across my right hand, but my left hand was my primary. Like, and this is the other thing too, where I realized that because I used my left hand so much with everything, my left hand got really strong. So like I had really strong hooks and really strong jabs. And so it's, it's though there was a disadvantage, but also did me a favor in, in, in the long run with a lot of stuff. And even like when I would play, I used to love playing dodgeball. I mean, I am firing that ball in just because I'm using my left hand so much for everything that I do. I've got a lot of muscle behind it. Well, let's talk about how emotional baggage affects people. Yes, sir. So the way that emotional baggage does affect people, like where, where emotional baggage basically ends up coming from is from our experiences, the experiences and things that we go through. It, it's not the moment that happened. It's not what happens, but it's what we end up making it mean. And that's the thing that, you know, that never really gets talked about is, is that what it is that we're making these moments in our life mean. It's the meaning that we're attaching to them that causes the baggage, changes how we view ourselves. It's like all these layers that we, emotional baggage is like layers that we end up putting on top of ourselves where our true self is at our core, but then we end up putting these layers on top of ourselves to cover up or to add on to, you know, to kind of make up for, you know, what's happened in my life. And so because this happened, I'm making it mean this to protect me from that. And so it ends up causing us to act in such a way that is still in the perspective of what we have gone through. We are in a sense still living, emotional baggage causes us to still live our experiences. It's causing us to still live in the present, live what we went through in the present. I almost kind of see it like this as well. Emotional baggage is kind of like an Instagram filter where the world is actually one is actually, you know, clear. But because of what I went through, it caused me it now causes me to see the world with this filter. And so where you see it as one thing, I'm seeing it as something else because of what. And so it shapes our perspective and it changes how we view the world and how we perceive things really does make a significant difference if we do not take the time to heal from what we've gone through. Why do you give us some of the reasons you feel that people carry emotional baggage around? I think I feel like the one of the reasons that we carry them is is for one, you know, we're we're never really taught to deal with our emotions. And so we're never we don't, you know, become aware. It's like there's there's certain if we're not taught how to deal with it, we're gonna struggle with it. And so we have to learn how to deal with what we're going through. And it's not that people want to hold on to it but they just don't know how to let go of it. We just think that this is just what is. We don't take the time. And it's because we're never taught to, but 
we never we never take the time to question you know is this how things have to be is this what it's going to be for the rest of my life feel this way how can i change this i want to feel something else i don't like how this is going i don't like how i'm feeling i don't like how my life is going i don't like the results that i'm getting because the other thing is that the you know, emotional baggage also changes the results that we get in our life and so if we never take the time to question what is going on then happening if we don't change what's going on inside but it's not the sense that they want to but we're not sometimes we're just not aware of you know that we need to be healed we just think that this is just what is and so because we think that this is just what is we just continue not knowing that something is there give us some tips on on how people can free themselves from emotional baggage yeah so when it comes to freeing them so this is going to be this is going to be a little bit of a a long-winded answer so Stay with me here. So there's there's five steps in freeing ourselves from emotional baggage. The first one is that we have to have desire. Desire is the driving force of getting what we're of getting what we're wanting. I have a I have a saying. It's the level of our desire will determine the rate at which we acquire. So whatever, however much of a desire we have to be healed, to be whole, to be set free from what we've gone through, to become a new person however uh, however uh however how, how, excuse me whatever the level of desire is will be the rate at which we get the thing that we're seeking so we have to want it we have to really want to be healed knowing that hey i'm dealing with this i see what's going on in my life and i don't like this and so i want to be healed and so i or i want to i want to overcome what i'm dealing with and so desire is the driving force of it and then the second thing is awareness Awareness is so important and it's, I feel like it's overlooked a lot. We don't take the time to, sometimes, a lot of times we don't take the time to be aware of what's going on, you know, paying attention to what's going on inside, noticing what we're dealing with, noticing our emotions and what's causing our emotions and, or what's causing certain things that we're dealing with. What's, what's go, just taking notice. That's all. Just awareness is just taking notice of what is going on. And as we notice, you know, we don't make it right. It's not right. It's not wrong. It's just what is. And so as we take notice of these things, whether that be, you know, if we're, you know, noticing whether, you know, if I'm at a certain place and it caused me to feel this way, or if I'm doing a certain thing and it caused me to feel a certain way, or if I'm talking to a certain person, like some women have a, have a, have problem or they, they feel some kind of way when they're talking to the opposite sex or some men feel some type of way when they're talking to the opposite sex. And so it's noticing that, hey, when I talk to these people or when I do this certain thing, I notice that I feel this way. And then after awareness, it's taking the time to, to question, hey, why am I, this is a, and this is a big question here. Why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling this way? What's causing me to feel this way? That is a big question. Why am I feeling this way? As we notice what's happening. And so then as we take the time to ask ourselves, what is, why am I feeling this way? If we be patient enough and we're willing to see the answer, we will eventually come into, will eventually come into what the answer is. And so, like I said, when I prayed, I'm like, Lord, open up my eyes to me beyond the limitations of my understanding. I was ready for that answer. I was ready for that answer. And I feel like that's why I got it so quick. It was probably like a week and a half that God had opened up my eyes to what was going on. And so, the other thing too is, what's our intention? When it comes to freeing ourselves from emotion, from emotional baggage, always being a mind or being being mindful and being aware of what our intention is. Are we intending to be whole? Are we intending to to heal from what we're going through? Is our intention to actually heal? Because sometimes I say that because there are people who who deal with you know, various things, you know, who deal with maybe like it could be anxiety or depression. And this is one thing where, and and my intention is not to offend anybody, but I just want to give people the truth. One thing that throws me off is when people say my anxiety or my depression, why are you claiming something that you don't want? Or do you, are you okay with having anxiety? Are you okay with having depression? Are you okay with, you know, feeling the way that you feel because of what you've gone through? Are you okay with it? Or do you actually want to be healed and be made whole and be set free and, and from what you've gone through? Or are you okay with living in the chains of what you've gone through? And that's why I say intention is very important. 
are we intending to actually be healed from what we're going through? Or are we just intending to just continue with this? Because especially right now, in today's in the society as it is right now, a lot of people are dealing with mental health. But there are some people, this is I'm not this is not everybody. There are people out there who are actually dealing with serious mental health issues, who really need medication, who need to go to therapy, who really need help. But then there are those who it, it has almost become like a fad to some people. Oh, well, everybody else has gone through this and actually everybody else is dealing with stuff. I want to, you know, I want to deal with something too, just to fit in. And so, and so that, that's the thing is it's, are we intending to actually heal from what we're dealing with now after intention is, so it's desire, awareness, intentions, and then becomes the willingness to submit. And this is a hard, this is probably the this could be like the hardest part of this is the willingness to surrender, to submit, to let go of the willingness to give up what I'm dealing with, which can take time. And it's going to different for everybody because, you know, everybody has gone through different things. But the thing is, the thing to ask ourselves is, do I want to continue feeling this way where it's not easy to let go, but do you want to continue feeling this way? Are you OK with actually feeling this way? Or do you actually want to be healed and set free from what you've gone through, from the chains of yesterday, from the chains of what happened? The willingness to submit and surrender what has happened, letting the willingness to let it go where I'm not, it's not the easiest thing to do, but it's the best thing to do. Well, tell and then the last thing. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you were oh, done. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, no, you're good. And then the last thing is just having faith that, you know, what you're believing and really believing that what it is that you're looking for will come into fruition. What you are seeking to be healed, to no longer deal with anxiety, to no longer deal with depression, to no longer, you know, see, you know, in your eyes, what happened yesterday to what happened in your past to, to truly believe that, hey, there's going to come a day. I don't know when it is, but the day is coming that I'm going to be healed. That I'm going to be free from my past. So it's desire, awareness, intentions, surrendering, and faith. Well, tell us about your speaking organization called Speaking to the You and You. Talk about why you decided to found that and what the organization does. Yeah. So speaking to the You and You, it's it's funny. This is actually this was like literally a God given idea. the The name of the organization, Speaking to the You and You, because it was God. He gave me that name because there is a you, you inside of you. There is a version of ourselves. There is a the idea of who we would like to be. The perfect version of ourselves is within us. There is an incorruptible side of us. There is a perfect side of us that is within us. And so that's the person that I'm speaking to when I see, even like even right now as I'm speaking or even on my videos or when I go on various podcasts as I'm speaking, I'm speaking to that person to pull that person outside that that person may live in the realms of reality and not the person that we are right now, because we are still, we are always going to be a work in progress. We're always in progress. We are always growing. We always have to continue to grow, continue to, to get better, continue to develop and, and go to the next level. We can't just sit and stay, but we have to continue to grow and, and, and evolve and, and become better. And so it's that person that I'm speaking to inside that is that I'm trying to pull on, I'm pulling that person out so that that person can go about this world and do what they were purposed to do. Because everybody has purpose on their life. Everybody has a purpose. Nothing is created for no reason. Everything that is created has a purpose. And that includes us. And so as we all have a purpose, it's the you inside of you that needs to be pulled out so that our purpose will be fulfilled in our life. Tell us about any current upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about. Yeah, so right now I'm actually working on a book. It's a it's a children's book about identity, and it's just teaching kids about their identity. In that we, so this is the okay. I'll say this real quick. So this is this is the thing with um, with psychologists, psychiatrists, counselors, therapy. The essence of what they are doing. 
the essence of what they are doing is they are restoring us back to our true I am. Because we all use these words, I am. And so the words that follow that will determine, determines how our life will be lived. But it's it's how we truly believe about ourselves will determine how we use that I am. So just listening to it, secretly talk about ourselves. And so as we go to therapy, this because our trauma and our baggage has changed how we view ourselves. It has changed our I am. It's put on all these layers. And so uh, therapy and counseling and psychiatrists and psychologists, they are coming to restore the essence of who we are. They're coming to restore our I am to what it really is. And so in the book, the children's book, I don't I haven't figured out a name for it yet, but the children's book is just in that teaching kids about their true identity. So that way, as they go through life, they can, they can, they can get realigned as, as you know, we may get not, we get knocked off balance sometimes. Everybody falls, but the thing is getting back up. And so as we get back up, we get back in alignment with who we are. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's what I'm working on right, right now. Well, give out your contact information so people can stay connected to you. Maybe somebody might want you to speak or something like that. Yes, sir. So you can actually follow me on Instagram. It is Joe Speaks, J-O underscore Speaks on Facebook. You can reach me at, it's the name of my organization, Speaking to the U in You. And those will be the, the places that you can best reach me. Okay. Give us some final thoughts to close it out. The thing I would, I would really leave with everybody is to take care of your heart. Guard your heart with diligence. Because out of your heart flows the issues of life. What everything, all the things that we have gone through is stored within our heart. And so as we really take the time to guard that and be mindful of what we are allowing in, it can really, uh, it can keep us from going from, from a lot of pitfalls, from a lot of things that we don't have to go through. And so in that, a big thing is being mindful because this is the thing, our soul, our soul, we are, we, okay. So how, how man is, Man is the, is the species. Man is the race. And so this is including every person. We are a spirit with a soul that lives in the physical body. So how, how people, when people, so as you, if you go on my social media, you'll see, you'll see me. You'll see Johannes Atlas. But what you see as Johannes Atlas is just a body. It's just a shell. This is just a vessel. This is not who I am, but this is just what I look like. I'm not my body. None of us. We are not our bodies excuse me, but who we are, we are a spirit with a soul. So it's like, I'll say it like this, as we, if, if you have two people, or I'll say, if you have a, like a significant other or a best friend, or, you know, somebody that knows you very well to describe who you are without using any, any physical features, that's who we are. That's the person that we are. And that's not our body. That's like I said, we are a spirit that possesses a soul that lives in a body. And so our soul is designed to receive. Our soul is designed to receive. And so we have the choice to either receive from our body or to receive from our spirit, where our spirit will give us life and everything, because this is the thing, our body is temporary. And so everything that's going to come from our body is going to be temporary. And so if we are getting fed from our body, everything that we're looking for, or if we're looking to be fed from our body, everything that we're getting fed with is always going to be temporary. And so we have to continue to go back to the thing to be fed. But if we feed from our spirit, which is eternal, we'll, we, we will always be filled. We will always be full. We'll always be whole. But this is the thing. So like I said, our, our soul is always eating and so, or it's always feeding. Sorry. And so the things that we feed off of from the world for like the music that we listen to and social media, it's very destructive. The things that we listen to, when you listen to the music of today, it's always just, it's all the, they all talk about the same thing, sex, drugs, and money and guns and, and just violence. And it's all those things are destructive over the long run within our soul. It's very destructive. It's, and again, social media in itself, it's destructive. How it is designed. Social media knows us better than we know ourselves. And so in the, I say all that to say that we have to be mindful of how we are feeding our soul for the health of it. As we are, as some people are really dealing with various, you know, you know, issues where people are dealing with anxiety and depression and, and various things. If you're not liking how you're feeling, if something is wrong, because we're supposed to have peace of mind, we're supposed to have life, we're supposed to feel good. 
And so if that is not the case, we need we ought to be mindful of how we're feeding ourselves. How, what is it that we're taking in? What is it that we're allowing to our ears all day? Are we gossiping and talking about uh, talking about what he did and what she said and what all the celebrities celebrities are doing? And what is it that we are feeding ourselves? And what is it that's coming out of our mouth are the things that we ought to be mindful of because it matters and it makes a difference how our soul is fed. If, are we listening to things that are benefiting us or are we listening to destructive things all the time? It makes a difference. But we are always, but we tend to just be so filled or, you know, just to, we tend to get so much into, you know, things that, you know, doesn't seem like it's a big deal. You know, it feels good. You know, oh, you know, it's just, it's just music. I'm just, you know, beat sounds good. And I get it. I get it. I don't blame you. I get it. But it makes a difference. It makes a difference in the health of our soul because our soul is still feeding. Our soul is still feeding. And so in that, it makes a difference what we are listening to. And so. All that to say, <laughs> to we we ought to just feed ourselves with better, you know, you know, listen to things that will help us and that will build our mind that develops us and that will listen to healthier things, like healthier music and and things that are, you know, that will give us peace. Like the peace of our mind is it makes a significant difference in all that we do. And so feeding ourselves with things that will add on to that is what I would leave with everybody. That was perfectly put, ladies and gentlemen. Joe Hannes Atlas. Follow him at Joe underscore speaks on Instagram and on Facebook, speaking to the you and you. Also, be sure to follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible. You never know who is dealing with emotional baggage these days and who this episode can help. And Android listeners, go to the Google Play Store and download the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast app, Joe Hannes. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Curtis. I appreciate it. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.